Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with the disastrous life of Psyche K episode number 9 and 10 reaction. Okay, the previous episode. Um it was Christmas and the New Year's episode because uh in the, the first episode of the previous week we got to see the section where we get uh, a little Christmas celebration. Nendo joins in and we get to see how Nendo never really got, you know, Santa to come. Santa being his dad because his dad, you know, like it's not here in this world anymore. So that's why, you know, like uh, Psyche's parents try to make him experience uh, Christmas, uh, like, you know, like by wearing the uh, Santa uh, clothing and coming in and trying to, you know, make him feel better. But by the end of it, they realize that her mom usually gives him gifts. And he's not like you know uh, accustomed to the concept of a Santa Claus, but he does get a gift, which is kind of nice. But still, you know, it was it was kind of uh, really nice to see how uh, like, you know, the Psyche Spence really tried to give him that experience. And, but unfortunately, Psyche lost his gift, so <laughs> Psyche <laughs> Psyche's gift Nendo got it. And then there was a New Year section of going to the um, uh, what do you call it the, the shrine and uh, where. Oh my god, like Psyche and all the uh, all the friends with uh, his friends kind of come there and his parents are very happy to see Psyche having so many friends and then you know like one by one all wishes come true, all the friends come in and then they go to their house and here uh, something happens. Uh, Psyche's mom like you know just said that oh like you know he's an esper which nobody knew and everyone was like what is she talking about? So to make uh, them forget the whole situation psyche later on used i think na 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 or something <laughs> to uh, erase their memory and not erase but replace it with something else and in the outcome was something hilarious where you know different people thought of different things of uh, like you know which replaced the whole section and that was that episode the next one was uh, where uh, we get to see the whole salesman section where um psyche's mom gets pissed off by the end because the salesman, she gets to realize the salesmen are tricking him, uh, tricking her because Psyche used forced telepathy. And uh, yeah, that was that. And then there was that uh, Geranium, I think. Yeah, um, uh, ring, which helped Psyche to completely shut off all the outside interference of, uh, you know, like the mind reading thing, uh, which worked out for certain sections, but he really was not comfortable with it. So he goes to the movie to see movie because he won't be spoiled but that brings another problem where Teruhashi was beside him he didn't realize that and then this random uh, like you know dude comes in who was like the um actor of the show that's going to happen the movie and i don't know if they're going to uh, resume from there but it ended in a very weird manner so i'm guessing it's going to resume from there let's see what happens so all right this is episode number nine of like it was so no sign on let's start i'll be putting the subtitles on the timeline here sync it to whichever is the preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go hmm All right, let's see. Hmm. 
the superstar i think it's going to resume okay or maybe not okay it is kind of resuming what the wait why is he here wait are they oh my god they're siblings oh Inter interesting i don't realize there were siblings okay <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god, I feel like it's yep. <laughs> Fly. <laughs> oh my god, a new problem. <laughs> He's sparkling. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. Teruhashi Makoto. Okay. Uh, um. Oh no, I feel like some he's gonna completely change. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> oh <laughs> well, this is psyche, so <laughs> even I feel hurt. <laughs> What? Yo, you're delusional. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so here we go. So this is one of those. Okay. What? All right, go home. You're drunk. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, this guy's crazy. Oh! Alright, enough. Yeah, it's... it's... Yeah... Oh no, it's Kokomi! Oh no. Wait, he called her? <laughs> Wait, so, oh no. She didn't feel that that's unusual? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> there you go, that's what you get. <laughs> Cast the die and upset in the finals, okay? 50 minutes. Alright, so drink. Probably test, yeah? Obviously. And there you go. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he just can't be bothered. Oh, oh, really? Okay, interesting. 
Ah, interesting. All right, so that's why. Makes sense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does he even pass? I wonder. There you go. I was just saying. <laughs> wow, that's from that's where we're starting with. Okay. Oh, what is that? Ah, uh, makes sense. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, true. Wait, what? Huh? Oh, the dad. Oh my God. His dad is helping him. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, it's basically kind of a, uh, you know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so all the time this happens. All the time this happens, that's how he is able to pass. <laughs> 51, okay. How did Psyche do? <laughs> what did Oh! Oh no! <laughs> he is not happy with this. <laughs> Oh, that's his dad's pencil. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, he he failed. <laughs> Poor guy. He brought Psyche's dad to help him. His dad goes and helps his own son, which makes sense. Okay. <laughs> it's a uh, channel yeah oh my god <laughs> master what happened to him did he like lose his job what happened to what's his name mike or mike Oh, there you go, Saki is there. Yeah, how? I wonder. Michael, that's the same thing. Ah, oh, that's why. <laughs> like an illusion. Mother, I got caught a while. Who you have a wife? Oh, yeah, I th oh, yeah, I think he said something like that uh, when he introduced himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh 
Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Wait, oh my god. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. But I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, he got tricked. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's why, okay. Oh, his wife. <laughs> Psychon. <laughs> Psycho. Sounds like a bicycle. <laughs> no. There's music here? Okay. Oh. Okay, okay. Hmm. Oh my god, it's stuck. Oh no! Huh? Yep. There you go. <laughs> oh, did she come? Oh my god. Why is he doing? Wait, what? I don't know what's happening. What? This is Midori? Doesn't look like Nen though. <coughs> okay. Oh, is it Nendo? Oh, it's Nendo's bomb. Maybe. Yeah. It is Nendo's bomb. The <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> no, he's psychic. He's not psychic. The voice is also the same. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> Just part of the uh, thing. Yep. <laughs> okay. Ah, and that's a good way. <laughs> okay. Mm, no. Yeah. Please stop, don't. Wow. <coughs> okay, come on, Psyche. <coughs> oh. 
Oh my god. <coughs> hmm. Oh my god, everyone left. <laughs> yeah. 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 Four. Oh, okay. Ah. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bank account. All right, stop. <laughs> yeah, he, he's just going to get scammed by other people. So just give it to Nendo's mom. Like, he's just going to... <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right, come on. Oh, this girl. We s see her in the opening and ending. <coughs> oh my god. Cut off. What was that? Cafe Mamen. Hmm. I'm going to guess one thing. The girl is going to be the waitress here. Mira, I think that was her name. There you go. I've seen this trope so much that I can get how what's going to happen. <laughs> it's just idiot, yeah. Better than wasting it. <laughs> he got two coffee jellos. Exactly. Chato Mera. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. The school doesn't. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you my life. Eyes. You're dropping it. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Um. Na na na. Use na na na. Wait, what happened? Okay, that's what he did. <laughs> Small change, yeah, hopefully. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go, this worked out pretty well. Oh no! Psyche's only place where he chills. Oh no. 
Cycle's only place where he. Oh no. <laughs> like he was saying that um, this is the place where I like you know like I can chill properly. So like they know that Mera's going to like working there. That's why a lot of people will go there from here onwards. That means Psyche is one place where you know he's all alone. That's going to be destroyed. Hmm. <clears throat> As soon as I saw that, you know, he went to the cafe, I knew that Mira was going to be working there. Because otherwise, why would they suddenly introduce a new character like that, you know? Like these tropes, I've seen them so many times that I can kind of understand what's going to happen afterward. <clears throat> but there are a few sections that really surprised me, you know, like, which kind of, they kind of twist the way they do it. In Psyche only, in Psyche Kusuna Sainan. I, I don't remember the episode, but there was one episode when I was really surprised. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> That was this episode. Okay, this episode, this is episode number nine. We begin with um, <coughs> this guy. Um, Toru Mugami, that's, uh, that's his, um, I think, stage name. His actual name, where is it? Um, Okay, I cannot find his. Anyways, I mean, he's his uh, <coughs> uh brother. Now, <coughs> I really did not realize that, you know, like, I, I was so surprised when I suddenly saw him in Teduhashi's place. I'm like, wait, what's happening? And then I was like, oh, okay. Then when she said, like, oh, big brother, I'm like, oh, okay, I understand. So they're basically siblings. And... You know, like, then I was able to realize he also has, like, a bluish hair, which shows how, you know, like, they're related. Now, he's one of those characters, you know, those <coughs> discount characters, just, you know, like, taking something to, like, the extreme. And, uh, like, I've seen a lot of characters like this before, but I feel like there's, like, a few characters who take this to such an extreme that it kind of... I don't know. It kind of deviates from comedy to actually a serious issue. <laughs> like, like a little bit, and like, you know, the whole Siscon trope is kind of funny sometimes, you know, like when they kind of do it in a more joking fashion. For example, um, like, after I can say, like, Monogatari, you know, like the whole Aladagi <laughs> thing. <laughs> you know, like, the. That, that whole thing is, is like done in a more comedic way, which is kind of a lot more uh, easier to swallow. But here, he genuinely seemed so like, I don't know, it's like... <laughs> this guy seemed genuinely, like, you know, just so crazy about that whole section that it, it kind of became a little bit, um, like, you know, uncomfortable by the end, you know, when we were seeing how his... I was like, you know, just completely unfocused when he was talking and talking about how um, uh, uh, Teruhashi was like some kind of goddess or whatever. And uh, yeah, and you know what, what was really, really like, you know, uh, took, like pushed the boundaries in this whole thing, this whole trope is when he said like, oh, I'm going to marry this and that, like, you know, all, all that stuff when that was coming. Like, and I've seen a lot of sitcom protagonists. Uh, and Siskon characters in you know anime, but I don't think I've seen anyone who actually just directly said I'm going to marry her. Like, was there anyone? Like, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I I don't remember anyone just saying something like that. At least like taking it that far. But this guy is just pushing all boundaries. He's just just completely crazy. And not only that, he starts coming, like, you know, at first he comes into uh, uh, Psyche's place 
and obviously everyone's surprised you know, the mom and dad and he goes to Saiki's room and starts just talking like oh you like, you know what did he say he starts bad mouthing him <laughs> calls him like you know, some kind of weird stuff you would fly on dogs poopings <laughs> Saiki is like that would mean your sister is the <laughs> dogs droopings if I'm the fly on it <laughs> oh no and he just keeps like you know just saying these type of things and oh my god then then it starts getting weirder when he, he starts talking about how he has been with kokomi from the beginning and how like you know like she is like the perfect masterpiece created by god this and that and then when he's like oh i'm the only one suitable for being by his side this and that then he starts going crazy his eyes become unfocused he starts laughing in a weird way you know like his head completely like tilted to one side like yeah this is no more comedy at this point this guy really needs help so <laughs> this is not comedy this is a disease so <laughs> oh my god <laughs> now all that was happening now teru actually suddenly comes in because Psyche telepathically contacted her and you know what the funny thing here is she didn't even second like you know like, like you know, he didn't even question about the fact that she could hear Psyche's voice in his in her head <laughs> so <laughs> like she's like another type of a oh my god like like I'm, I'm pretty sure she just thinks about Psyche so much that hearing her his voice in her head is something that's probably like normal now so that's why when Saiki telepathically contacted her, she didn't even blink an eyelid. She just came here and she didn't even question the fact that how did that happen? <laughs> oh my god. So <clears throat> she comes here and she's like, Why oh brother, why are you here? And and uh, the the brother he, he tries to like you know smoothen things up and says like, Oh, like you know, I just came here to tell Psyche that don't misunderstand. No? And uh, he, like, you know, like, I, uh, and at first, Teruhash was like, okay, thank God. And then she realized that Saiki is not supposed to be knowing the fact that she thinks about him. And his brother basically came and just, just said that, you know, in, in, the, in that way. And uh, she's like, oh, brother, I hate you. Just as soon as he realized that Saiki probably knows. <laughs> and his brother just completely... <laughs> oh everything crashes down <clears throat> so yeah this is this guy and <laughs> i don't know like you know i have a lot of concerns about this guy so i'm sure we'll get to meet him in the future as well i'm not looking forward to that at all <laughs> but anyways um the next part is the okay next part is the school test where um Everyone's in the like you know room just writing the questions and everything and we can see that Psyche here as always he is an expert so obviously he can he will you know listen to the answers and write the answers but you know what the uh, interesting thing here is I did not expect this but I guess I should have expected this because he's like you know his brain is just uh what can I say like you know very advanced or whatever and he's like an esper so <clears throat> I should have expected him to know all the answers so what it says is like i know all the answers but what why i actually do this is because i i, I don't want to be top you know, more uh, attention is going to fall on me that's why i like you know i i uh, write wrong answers deliberately to, to be in the middle like you know like in the middle you know what he reminded me of at that moment it reminded me of Ayano Koji from a Classroom of the Elite, you know, when he, <laughs> what he did was he just, like, you know, got the same answer, like, you know, like, like the same number, like, you know, all the time. And which in itself was so amazing because, you know, if, if I hope I'm not spoiling this. I'm pretty sure everyone's have watched Classroom of the Elite, you know, when, when the big, uh, the, the, the girl, I forgot her name, her big brother confronted him about the whole thing. He said that 
you know what crazy what crazy is you get the same number every time which in itself shows how impressive it is you you are even better than people who get the top answer because you are able to maintain that position that means you know all the answers and you can actually calculate and you know like calculate and be average all the time keeping the same number which in itself is a more impressive than the toppers here and uh, that's what he kind of reminded me of he he just he knows everything but he just deliberately just makes uh, some mistakes so that he's in the average now one thing i don't understand here is like then why does he need to uh, you know just telepathically listen to others he knows the answers doesn't he he could easily make a mistake because he knows the answers let me check I can easily get 100% on the high school level tests on my own. <clears throat> I cheat in order not to stand out, that is in order to get an average score. I don't understand the reasoning here. Like, he says that he can get 100% marks. But then he says that he cheats because he wants to get an average score. Then why does he need to cheat? If he can get 100% marks, he could easily like, you know, make some mistakes in them and attain the average ones. I don't understand this part. This, this part's logic is a little bit weird. But either way, like, I get the point, what he tried to say, and I understand what he's doing. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so, um, everyone just, like, you know, like, it's like, oh, how everything didn't go. Everyone's like, oh, this is how my test went, this and that. And uh, Nendo is like, uh, what is the test? Um, what, what, what? <laughs> Hold, held back what, what is that thing he doesn't know anything <laughs> he doesn't even know the fact that he will be held off if he fails so <laughs> everyone's like oh my god what do we do and Nendo brings out his ace in the uh, what do you call it the trump card it's like this pencil it helps me out it just rolls it like a like, <laughs> like a dice <laughs> and answers the question so Psyche at first, Psyche was like, ah, like he's obviously going to fail and start writing. Then he realizes that all the answers that he is doing using the pencil is correct. And he's like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> and then he sees that his dad is helping him out. Now, it's interesting to see that, as that Psyche says, that Nendo's dad you know, shouldn't have the memories. Then why is he helping him out? Um, I, like, you know, like, I'm guessing this is like a mixture of two reasons. Number one reason is because of the pencil, as Nendo says in the end, that's his father's pencil. Uh, probably some attachment to the pencil, that's why he is helping him out. Another thing, I don't know, this is just something that I would wish to believe, is that as he said, you know, as Nendo's dad said something like, I don't even know why, but I want to, uh, like, you know, help this guy out. Something like that, he said. So this is what I would want to believe that because he's his son you know like if, like an emotional connection or whatever you know something like that that's why you know these two reasons i would like to think like obviously the pencil is one of the reasons i know that but i would like to think that there's also like a deeper bond between them like you know even after death something like that so <clears throat> yeah now the funny thing here is <laughs> what was his name um the the that guy um the medium guy, um, oh god, Reita, Reita, yeah, I remember, Reita, he brought, <laughs> his guy, he's his guardian spirit, he brought him so that he could help him out, <laughs> he just <laughs> left him all alone, and he, he, I think he failed, in the end, we see his names at the end, at the last, he failed, and the funny thing here is, Nendo actually scored better than Psyche, and Psyche, in the end, Psyche looks like, I, yeah, I wanted this, you know, but but his face did not show that. You know, in his in his heart, he was like, yeah, this is what I wanted, you know. Like, you know, I'm not I'm not mad. I'm not, you know, nothing's bothering me. But his face was not showing that at all. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. And I guess up until now, this is how he has always passed. And I I did wonder like how was he here? Like, you know, if he fails most of the time, how has he? come up until now what has he done how is he here so this is how that's how we do it his dad always helps him <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> okay what else 
The next part. Uh, John Oryoksha, he again is drunk, almost like you know, in, the, in, the, in the middle of the road, crying, and Saiki, uh, right, like you know, just meets him, runs into him, and he talks about how today will be the end because his assistant, um, Ike, Mr. Ike, <laughs> he has gotten into an accident, that's why he cannot help him out as his assistant, so he needs someone else and uh, you know like he <clears throat> he wants to uh i cannot show i think midori was that her name i think so i think that, that was her name midori he wants to show her that he has changed after that day you know like after <clears throat> she left him he has changed and to do that he is he will show it in the way of magic trick and that's why he's like, oh, this is like, you know, I, I, I ask you to help me out. You know, like this is, like, you know, my last chance, this and that. He's crying and everything. <laughs> and at first, Psyche was really not like, you know, I'm going to help him out. But then when he like, you know, brings out what, like, when he says that he's going to uh, use the, 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 the box, which he bought from one point. 1 8 million yen and he got completely scammed he himself doesn't realize that and, <laughs> and when he said that i'm going to use like a random person in the audience to do it like he was like oh my god no like, mr ek almost died you know his hand got almost chopped off it's okay now but it wouldn't be that easy next time you know like maybe maybe someone will die so psyche was like yeah obviously i cannot let this happen so like i've said this before as well like i, I can understand what psyche is uh, you know like uh, like what type of a person psyche is he's basically you know like he usually doesn't care about most of the things but if there's some kind of thing that comes into his like you know notice and attention where he realizes that something wrong is about to happen he usually goes and helps like you know, try to make that thing okay so as long as he as he is under like you know he doesn't know what's happening as long as he doesn't realize what's happening he usually doesn't try to involve himself in these type of situation but if he somehow gets involved or someone involves him you know he as soon as that happens he, he tries to do his best and help people out and him being an esper also makes it as if like you know it's like it's very difficult for him to not get involved in something because he's an esper you know for example if he's just walking on the road and suddenly he reads someone's mind that someone is going to you know do a crying or something obviously he's involved at that moment you know like if he did not have his esper power he was he would have not would have been involved he would not know that that guy is going to do a crime that's why you know like he he couldn't do anything but since he's an esper Everything comes into his head and most of the things he gets to realize way earlier than normal humans can. That's why most of the time he gets involved in stuff and as soon as he gets involved, he tries his best and, you know, helps the, make the situation better. And again, as soon as he gets involved, as soon as he realizes that someone is going to get hurt, he's like, all right, fine, I'm going to do this. And... Um, he goes on the stage and here is where everything starts getting weird you know um at first um you know like psyche was just waiting there and then uh, at first uh uh chono was like oh midori is not here and then the door opens and in comes um nendo and i'm like what and i was like what's happening and then they start talking about like you know the backstory and they I was really confused here, you know, like I was like, wait, Nendo is Midori? And then they were showing us the little backstory of how he met Nendo. And, uh, you know, like we see like a, a, a girl there and I'm like, wait a minute, this is not, uh, not Nendo, sorry, Midori, oh God. <laughs> how he met Midori. And uh, at this moment, I was like, like what is happening and then when he they showed us the backstory of him going to the cafe and meeting like a girl and he talks about how he became better friends and everything and we see like a, a, a random girl there i'm like okay this is not nendo and then i realized like okay maybe maybe this is nendo's mom 
you know because after that they show us how like you know she is like a widow and everything starts like you know kind of coinciding with this situation and i'm like all right so maybe it's not like you know like nendo but it's actually nendo's mom that's why when nendo came in he, he became happy because he knew that nendo came that means his mom has also come with him and i'm like okay that's probably what happened but one thing that i was not expecting is nendo's mom looking completely like nendo so <laughs> His mom, his dad, and his son, all, like, you know, the, the, the son, all looks the same. I can understand the son looking like the mom and the dad. But how can a, the dad look like the mom? How? How is this possible? <laughs> this is weird. But, okay. <laughs> they have the same voice. <laughs> oh my god. So, now we get to know the bad story. And Nendo's mom comes and uh, meets uh, Chono in, in the backstage, you know. So here Chono is like, oh, I'm going to show you, like, you know, my, the perfect magic. And um, <laughs> Nendo's like, oh, like, you know, looks at Psyche and he's like, oh, I thought, I thought you were my pal. You're not my pal. <laughs> and yeah, so Psyche... Okay, so Psyche was like, oh my god, like this is getting more complicated and uh, the mom is like, okay, like, you know, I'll see your magic and so I'm, I'm going to decide after that. So later on, as they're on stage, at first Psyche was like, okay, this, they're going to use the chainsaw to cut the box. So what I'm going to do is destroy the chainsaw as it's, it will move past me and I'm going to mend it back again and uh, that's how I'll survive. And then I'll bend my body so that it seems like my body is detached. And like, you know, that was the plan that Psyche was going to go with. But this guy, not this guy, sorry, Nendo. Nendo's like, oh, I want to do it. You know, I, I, I want to see how, my, how it feels like if my body is detached. <laughs> Typical Nendo. And uh, here is what everything gets a little bit tricky. So Psyche was really thinking what he could do. And how is he going to save Nendo? Because in the end, as you said, like, it would have been a really difficult situation. But he does say that he has four ways to help Nendo out. So I guess he would have been fine either way. But still, before doing it, you know, like, uh, what's his name? Um, Chono like, you know, got like the flashbacks of Nendo and him, like, you know, hanging around and everything. And he's like, no, I cannot do it, you know. Unless and until I'm completely sure that I will be able to do it. I won't, I cannot involve someone else in this. And he drops the chainsaw. You know what the funny thing is? I wonder why he did not think that about Psyche. Psyche is also a human, you know. <laughs> but I guess because he is his master, you know, he probably thought that, oh, master would be able to do it. Or something like that, I guess. So, yeah. Anyways, um... So he's like, oh, I cannot do it, you know, like the, the, the whole scene was so amazing, you know, it was, it was such like a, like a very moving moment, you know, when we see that, oh, this guy has finally understood what he was doing wrong. It was such a nice scene. And then the next scene we see everything has been trashed. <laughs> he has been beaten up. He's on the ground. <laughs> and everyone got mad because, <laughs> because he did not provide the magic trick, which I don't <laughs> I don't blame them because he started a magic trick by saying that he was going to do it, but in the end, he didn't do it. But I feel like beating him up was a bit too far. Like, you know, like, they, I don't know. I feel like that was a bit too far, but I guess mob mentality, you know. Anyways, um, so he's like, oh, like, everything's over, but Mizori comes in and she's like, like, all right, you know, like, you, you impressed me. And uh, I'll wait, I'll wait for the day when you'll be able to do your magic well. And um, he, she gives him the bank book and the credit card. He's like, here you go, when you left, you know, like you kept this with me. So I've not used anything, you, know, you, you keep it. And, <laughs> and he's like, oh, thank God. Now I'm going to buy another, um, what did he say? I'll make sure you succeed next time. With this money, I'll buy a brand new 1.2 million yen body cutting machine. And then those mom just stopped. She's like, 
what did you say 1.2 million yen i could have used it myself and i'm i'm like yeah you know what like you know he's just going to get scammed by some other dude so you know like it would have been a, a better use if it was with nendo's mom and if she used it instead of just giving it to some kind of scammer so <laughs> i really hope he doesn't buy another body cutting machine and get scammed again like yeah anyways next part is the part with um mira i think that was her name and uh, okay you know what what's her name mira just a sec mira chisato mira chisato wait does her name mean something i don't know mira chisato no, I don't think so. Like, like how Cho Norukshai is like, you know, Cho Norukshai and like an Esper or whatever it's called. Mera Chisato, Chisato Mera, Chisato Mera, Mera Chisato. No, I don't, I don't think her name means any particular thing. So, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, Mera Chisato, she, like, you know, like how, just like how every character has like a, a thing, like, you know, which is kind of, uh, different about them from others she has a thing which is like you know like which is she's i guess it's not like a like a thing thing but it's actually like her condition she's she's you know she's from a poor background and she does so many jobs just to keep her herself and her family afloat that's like her thing so when we when we start like you know that we start in school where psyche is sitting down and everyone's like oh let's go to the karaoke I was like, yeah, I'm going. And um, Kaido and Nendo, they just get ignored by everyone. And Teruhashi gets asked, but Teruhashi is like, oh, Saiki is not going, so I'm not going to go. She's like, nah, I, I have my Koto lessons, you know. <laughs> and Mera also declines. So the way everything was going, you know, we see Saiki in the caf uh, cafe, you know, just waiting there. For his coffee cello and i was like wait a minute the way this is going i'm feeling like mera is probably going to be the wait waitress over here and there you go i was not wrong she is doing part-time job here and like this is the like the like a, tr a tr trope you know i've seen this trope before as well like where like you know they talk about someone and the next scene we see him him or her like in a doing a job part-time and uh, you know like this kind of a thing so I was like, yep, that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, why would say they suddenly introduce a new character here? So Mira Chisato, uh, you know, Chisato comes in and she, she just drops, like when she sees Psyche, she drops the thing, the whole tray. But Psyche sucked up the coffee gel and ate it. <laughs> Which by the end of it, it was, I guess, a better, you know, like thing because she got, he got two coffee gel at the price of one <laughs> so yeah later on he gets like another coffee jello because you know she dropped the other one that's why so here she talks about how like you know her family is poor and she does so many things you know like like doing like giving newspaper doing some like babysitting this and that so many multiple jobs she does from the morning to the end uh, to the night that yeah, so Psyche says that oh, everyone probably knew from the beginning that you, your like you know family is not well off because you have you know a different like you know like, like the gym clothes that you wear is someone else's your lunch you know like is kind of bland all that but what she doesn't want everyone else to know is that she does bar part time job here and multiple places because you know like it's. Ban banned like I mean, it's not allowed the school doesn't allow them to do these type of things but you know what i feel like if uh, she went to the principal or whatever and told them about his her condition i know like she could have probably gotten a special permission or something because otherwise what would she even do you know like, this is like her livelihood so i feel like they would have like made an exception for them for her like usually because school, I feel like schools uh, doesn't allow like you know these type of part-time jobs mainly because a lot of people like you know students I don't know like just 
do part time jobs and don't study enough or something something because of that but her situation is different you know she has to do this this is a necessity this is not like a hobby or something he she does for you know like to buy something or to do something else no this is a necessity so i'm i'm pretty sure like this could have easily been uh, you know just changed if she just went to the principal told them about the condition of her place and say that i need to do this you know and he could have she could have easily gotten like an like, you know like an exceptional rule or something for her only that oh you can you can do the part time jobs something like that i don't know but anyways she's like uh, she just psyche don't tell this to anyone and she was so hungry that she she just kept looking at psyche's coffee jello so like he was like, all right, you you can eat it. <laughs> so, Saiki goes out. Masuda Zai, what was her name? Masu. Just a sec. Masuzaki. Okay, I forgot. Uh, yeah, Matsuzaki. Matsuzaki was here, and uh, Saiki is like, oh, Saiki saw that, and Saiki kind of changed. I thought he was going to use the Nanana -na -na again to change the memory but no he did something better you know he changed the rules of the whole thing you know like he opened the thing and made this another like you know rule that their school allows people to do part-time that's why Masu Zaki was like oh you're doing part-time job okay and uh, <clears throat> yeah this became like the normal of the world it's not unnatural for PK academic students to work now i feel like this kind of worked out in a very bad way especially for psyche because now when the the next day students ask uh mira to join them mira is like no i have my part-time job and the students are like the friends are like oh okay then we'll just go and hang out you know in your place in in, in the cafe that you work with work in and she's like oh really okay and now psyche like you know that that's just the beginning Teruyashi gets to see that Psyche is going to go there and Teruyashi is like, oh, I'm also going to go. And like everyone's going to go there and I feel like this is going to become a mess where Psyche would actually realize that his peace, like, you know, time where he just peacefully eats coffee jello is going to be just filled with all these people. And uh, so, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go, but because you know, Psyche loves his peace time, so I feel like he would realize that he probably made a mistake. He he could have just made uh, the teacher forget about that section instead of changing the rules of the world or something. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, that was episode nine. Let's start with the next one, episode number ten. So I'll be putting the surprise and the time here. Sync it to whichever is your preference, and let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, Uh Okay, let's see. Reignited physical fitness test. Hmm, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, he's too strong. Oh no! All right. Oh, forty-six. Okay, really amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nando. All right. Let's see who wins. <laughs> ah! Yeah. <laughs> oh, he won. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. This is crazy. All right. How did he do? How much? <laughs> Look at him. Oh, okay, okay. What happened? <laughs> Seventy-nine. All right. Wow. How much? Eighty-one. <laughs> oh no good strength <laughs> 63 <laughs> yeah oh no oh Wow. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Dude. coughs> oh my god. Yeah, that might be actually. <laughs> you know what? I believe you. <laughs> oh no okay no no <laughs> Oh, is he? Okay, maybe he can do this properly. Whoa! What? Ben must. <laughs> Whoa, that was a wordplay joke. <laughs> Little love story. Oh my god, what's going to happen here? <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> no one does that. 
What happened? What? Ah! <laughs> Yo, his face, he became a Jojo character. <laughs> oh no. Saigi is going to use this to his advantage. Wait. Oh, yo, is that Psyche? <laughs> Psy. Ah. Damn. Whoa. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, what is the plan? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Oh no. I feel like it's going to fail somehow. Let's see. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I cannot! Oh my god! Oh no! Okay, wow. Okay, this is going to work in a very bad way. Lady scrapping him. Oh my god, that was amazing. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All fun are stored. 100 yen? Germanium fantasy. Is that like a Grand Blue fantasy parody? <laughs> Nick. Nick. What? <laughs> oh no, you can This is one of the worst. Quick time events. Oh my god, another bad. Wow, that's why no one plays this game. Insta death, okay. No, no try again option. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. Crashed. Ugh. Oh no. What? <laughs> oh 
Why? What are you? Yeah, why are you? Dawn? I don't think so. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Yep. Nice. I hope it doesn't crash. No, don't do that. Why? Oh my God, it's gonna, yeah. <laughs> One of those gamer rage moments, you know? Welcome home, mama. Oh my God. <laughs> Chunkan. <laughs> no, he doesn't know. <laughs> Ah, there you go. That's a different thing then. <laughs> Shunkun. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Mom? Okay, no. Oh no, it's one of those. <laughs> the, the dark history. <laughs> yeah. Stop, Nendo. <laughs> He's shy, okay. Yeah. What? Shibu? Okay, stop. Company president. <laughs> oh no, here we go. Yep. Oh my god, she's one. What? Uh. Oh, 
Well... Yeah... Alright, Nendo, stop. Hmm... Oh my god. Mm. Ah. Oh my god, it's the same game. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, as you say, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's 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 those notebooks. Oh god. Confessing love, spirit summoning. Th oh my god. Itano Yoriko. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the police. Yeah? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, stop! <laughs> oh, okay. Who? Ah. Ch That's not good. No. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, what? Okay. I I doubt this works. But oh my god! <laughs> yes. <Ugh. laughs> Rentaro. <laughs> okay, what did you do? Oh, he's the harem protagonist, okay. <laughs> Yo, his voice actor is Kirito. Oh no. Oh my god. Here we go. <laughs> uh. Okay.
<laughs> oh no okay here we go oh this is this is one of those hand protect uh, one of those uh, oh my god exactly oh oh no that was Kirito's voice actor wasn't it oh my god i love i love how they <laughs> made him <laughs> the voice actor for this guy rentaro i think that was his name and you know what i feel like rentaro is also like one of those names that like usually harem protagonists have in this type of a name rentaro or something like that <laughs> oh. Oh, another good episode <clears throat> that yep All right, so this episode it begins with <clears throat> a fitness test in their school, where um, Psyche usually has to kind of you know like uh, keep his power in check because you know like he's he's like he's very strong, so <clears throat> he always has to keep this in mind. While on the other hand, Hyro is we know how he's competitive. So Hyro and Nendo has this type of rivalry, like a one-sided rivalry, where Hyro is like, like you know, like we, we know, we see how he has become this type of a <coughs> person who wants to like, you know, just uh, have like a good battle or good rivalry with Nendo. And uh, <coughs> that's why he's like, all right, like, you know, I'll do my best. Like, I'm more fired up because Nendo's here. So he, there was like the, the ball throwing, uh, you know, section where, <clears throat> Nendo does it a little bit better um, and uh, <clears throat> Hyro was like alright this is the first one I'll do better in the next one and uh, the next one was the sidestepping yeah the sidestepping thing where again Nendo does a little bit be better with you know like <laughs> with the balls in his chest <laughs> Even with that handicap, he was able to do better. And uh, <clears throat> now it's interesting to see how Psyche does all of these. Like the one he, uh, where he threw the ball, he he mistakenly threw it very like you know high, and then he kind of used uh, I, just tele I think telekinesis to <clears throat> bring it down properly. The side stepping one, he just copied the one in the in in front of him, so that you know like that was not a big problem for him. <clears throat> The next one, the uh, hand grip test, again, Nendo was a little bit better than Hyro. While thinking about all of this, Psyche like, almost just broke the thing. And I, I love that section because what he did was he did not just, you know, like, loosen his grip. What he did is broke it even more and it completely did a 360 degree turn. And it came back to the original, you know, place initial position and that was hilarious <laughs> okay mm. okay the next one was the one where um nendo wasn't able to do better the the flexibility one yep and uh, because of the the face chest you know that's why he was not able to do it but you know what for hyro it was all he needed he was like ah there you go i'm better and he's like, ah, oh, you know, we are rivals, you know, with, with, <laughs> with his hand extended to shake hands with him. Oh my God. 
and uh, I love the fact that up until now, um, Kaido really didn't do any of the good, like you know, any of those um, physical tests better than anybody. She, he was very like you know low in the score, but in this one he was perfect. He he did he even beat uh, Kai uh, um, Hiro here as well, and uh, he talks about how his nickname was like something like what did he say? Kaido the cave dwelling band master. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, like I lost. And he's like, yeah, like you know, all the time there should there would definitely be, be someone who is better than you. And somehow he was able to accept it. <laughs> okay, that was funny. The next section, the cat section was hilarious. I love that part. Where the cat, you know, like um What's his name? Uh, I, I can't find out, but they gave him a name. Of, I can't, I can't find that portion out. But anyways, you know, the cat, he is trying to make Psyche, you know, like pet him because, you know, it's a cat. And he's like, ah, like, you human, you should be kneeling before me. I would come every day over here unless and until you decide to pet me <laughs> and you decide to kneel in front of me and he's just you know like they're meowing away <laughs> and the dad obviously the dad is just completely like you know very fond of the cat but you know like the mom wouldn't allow it because of her allergies that's why the the dad like you know cycle's dad cannot do anything but you know he's like feeding him and everything so <laughs> I love the fact that after, like, as soon as, I think Pussy, that was the name of the cat, the female cat. When she, she came, this cat, he was like, suddenly became a Jojo character. On his face. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> that was, that was funny. And Psyche's like, alright, I can see where this is going. So Psyche was like, okay, I'm going to help you out. And uh, Psyche becomes a cat. And uh, um, he says like he can become different animals like this as well. Like he can become a gorilla, like not gorilla, sorry, panda. I saw a panda, a panda, a giraffe. But you know, like so, this is how he could. This is like another one of his powers. And um, and I think I realized in the the ending scene also shows us all those variations of psyche. You know, the girl variation, then the panda, the cat variation. Like the ending song shows us. I, I realized that. Or was it the opening? No, it's the ending. Yeah, it's the ending song. Oh wait, he can also become a ladybug. Interesting. <laughs> so, oh my god. And there's only one problem that Psyche, since he's like a animal, he cannot restrain his strength. So he just punched his dad away. <laughs> just slapped him. <laughs> and <laughs> and he Amp, okay, Amp, that's his name. Is that how his name is pronounced? Amp. Just a second. Ampu, Ampu, okay, yeah, there you go. Amp. So, Heck is like, come, follow me. I'm going to show you the way you're going to, like, you know, like, you will be able to talk with or confess your love for the cat. So now one thing we should like, you know, obviously like, you know, this is a cat. So the way they kind of do this whole thing is just through, like, you know, like he's, she's like, he's like, oh, like, you know, I, I, I really like that cat, you know, like, and that's why I'm going to mate with her. And that's basically how animals, you know, like this because they're animals. That's why how they do the whole thing. So <laughs> Psyche, <laughs> Psyche said that if you were a human, you would all be behind bars by now. But this is a cat, so you know, like it's a different thing. So Psyche is like, all right, I'm going to help you out. The plan was Psyche is going to go and as, go there, and as always, like you know, like this, like a, like a, one of those cliches. He's going to act like the bad person or the bad cat in this case, <laughs> and he's going to come out as like you know the good cat, and he'll be like going to save her, and he's <laughs> and he's, he'll become the hero. Everything went completely wrong because he missed the whole signal. 
he thought like psyche is going to signal him but when he found you know when 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 the cat pussy i think that was her name when pussy made a noise he thought that the whole act has started he came like you know down the alleyway and he's like stop one wrong move and you'll regret it <laughs> and he sees that pussy was actually just looking at a butterfly and just like you know getting excited she misunderstood that whole situation <laughs> she thought he was telling her <laughs> and psyche comes here and psyche realizes the whole thing is messed up because he just went she just psyche just went to take a toilet break oh my god that scene is so hilarious <laughs> in the toilet psyche is a cat is just sitting down that's one of the most funniest scene what the hell like <laughs> it's one of the most bizarre scenes you know like a cat in a toilet sitting down with sunglass <laughs> i don't know why but that 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 scene really made me laugh anyways he's like oh plan has failed and he like you know this cat arm he just completely goes crazy he's like trying to make the situation okay but he's just making it worse and <laughs> psyche comes in and amp is like psyche like you know do something and psyche is like all right fine he tries to push him away and his strength you know it's out of control it just smashed him and he just goes there and completely you know just gets into the like you know just falls down and <laughs> pussy is like oh my god you saved me i'd like to mate <laughs> I mean know your name <laughs> like oh my god and this this is how the whole thing went and from the next day onwards both the cats are outside psyche's house amp is here to find out where he is and beat him up while pussy is here because he likes psyche the cat version so there you go now they have two cats <laughs> and the dad is very happy the dad is like um pussy here is your footy woody <laughs> uh. all right the next one oh my god this part was also so good you know like this was like the part with all the uh, video game tropes and everything uh ulfana story x2 you know um he says how he doesn't usually you know uh go for popular games because he'd get spoiled either way so he goes for the crappy games or the kuso game so <laughs> it was like one which is called germanium fantasy 5 and there's like an olfana story x2 now i don't know if that was like a final fantasy parody or was that like a grand blue fantasy parody i'm not sure you know, like if you don't know grand blue fantasy is a gacha game uh it's probably final fantasy parody because it's called germanium fantasy 5 and you know how many like you know like versions a final fantasy has it's like it has like 10 12 versions or something like that like i don't even know which version final fantasy is currently at but something like that it's probably like a final fantasy uh, parody anyways um so he starts all fan all fan of fantasy fantasy all the video game tropes were here and i could relate to so many of them number one the the first thing that i could relate so much with is you cannot skip you cannot skip the cutscenes i'm not the person who skips cutscenes but i'm the type of person who after watching it for the first time obviously from the next time onwards everyone skips the cutscene there are games that exist where you cannot do that you know like i'm not joking there are games that exist like that and it's annoying you know like I've already seen it or you know like this type of thing like and even if uh, what can I say even if I haven't seen the cutscenes maybe I don't have enough time to watch this story or something so what video games should do is at least give us an option to skip something or not like oh my god like this is one thing that i really related with him like i've played games where you really cannot skip cutscenes and it's so annoying you know like for example you, you load a, a, a game like you know a safe like you know game and then you have to see the cutscene again like it's bad like just like that and 
there are sections where it's like completely unskippable like there are games where the most of the portions are skippable but it's like there's like certain portions you cannot skip at all and for example it's like and before a boss fight this boss is extremely strong you're losing like 10 times 20 times multiple times you're losing and each and every time that you reload the save you have to see that like you know like the 30 second unskippable scene if you must you must feel like oh it's a 30 second scene nothing much you know but if you keep you know like repeating that part for like 20 to 20 times at the at some point you're going to get annoyed by that cutscene you'll be like what the hell i've seen this 30 times i don't need to see this like you know i'm, I'm already struggling with the boss in itself why the hell do i have to see this cutscene over and over again why can i not skip this i could heavily relate to this so yeah thank thank god psyche brought that up <laughs> oh and there were a few others as well which i could relate to as well but like you know, the, this one was the, something that i really was able to uh, you know like relate with the whole um you know like skipping cutscene thing okay um another thing is i think like there's like a few others okay uh, really like you know uh, like info dumping that's another thing he said that which I, he doesn't like another one was like weird terminology quick time events another thing which i feel like a lot of gamers really hate you know there's like a few games with that which i know which ended their game with a quick time event and it's bad there's no boss fight in the end a quick time event a quick time event is the one where you defeat the final boss wow like yeah quick time event is another one of those annoying things so and then there was that that section of um <laughs> he just lost automatically <laughs> and then he has to like reload from the beginning again that was another bad thing so the next part was graphics differing from the advertised product and the advertised thing and the product like you know that one thing which i feel like video games do it a lot nowadays you know like the trailer is like oh so beautiful we go to the actual game it's pixelated that's like you know that's another one of those but as i said modern games have this problem as well mm. another one is where okay where is it oh yeah where the handshake part <laughs> the quick time event handshake you weren't able to do the handshake you die <laughs> you know what how much ridiculous it seems i remember even though it seems so ridiculous i remember there was a certain game i played where something like that did happen and i was also like this i was like what like obviously this one's not shaking shaking hand but it was something else but you know but you weren't able to do the quick time event so ultimately you died so that type of a thing and i'm <laughs> Oh my god, this was fantastic. Another one, as they say, when the boss is your, uh, like, you know, when, when, the, when the main uh, villain is the enemy and when, like, and I think there's like a meme for this as well. When the main villain is your enemy while the, when the main villain is your ally. When he's an enemy, he's just so strong, like, unstoppable. When he's your ally, he just becomes like a little, <laughs> like, you know, that's what happened here. He killed Psyche in the beginning because he didn't shake his hand. But then when he was fighting the enemies, he was doing, dealing two damage. <laughs> Another annoying thing, which is you have to save your ally as well. And your ally is a brain dead AI, you know, like those escort missions where your ally just goes ahead of you, you know, without thinking of the consequences, die, and then you lose the game. That, that is another thing. One of those annoying things. So I can talk about this for so many, because I, you know, like I, I play games a lot. I used to play games a lot nowadays i don't play that much so i know you know these type of things and yes like this i really enjoyed this part this section so much you know like the way psyche was bringing up all these like you know these things and it was like this is how you know like a game is bad <laughs> and uh, then like you know like the the, the boss is dead and the boss like you know regenerates again that was another one and uh Oh, the game crashed as well, as far as I can remember that thing. And then when he finally goes to the end, he's like, all right, thank God. Let me fix my controller. 
but the controller was connected so everything just reverted back and then psyche is like i can't be bothered destroys the whole game <laughs> oh, that was amazing i loved that all right the next part we meet Kai, uh, kaido's mom and his mom was just there and he kaido was like mama and then he realized like i called my mom mama got a little bit embarrassed and Kaido's mom was like, like, oh, are you, are you his friends? Come, like, you know, come with me. Uh, and Kaido was really thinking about like, oh, like, I really hope that they don't come with me. But then Nendo was like, oh, I don't have anything to do. Psyche's like, Psyche was not going to go. But as soon as he got to know that they have coffee jello, he's like, let's go. They go to their room and we can see that how, you know, like Kaido is, um, little bit timid in front of her mom his mom and obviously i feel like i think like he probably is like embarrassed about the whole juni thing that's why in, in his in his house he does the normal thing like acts like a normal person but now that the friends are also here he's in a dilemma he feels like he should do his juni thing but at the same time his mom is there so that's why he didn't want them to be here <laughs> so when the mom goes away um, psych, uh, like, you know, Kaido talks about how, like, you know, like, when, when um, uh, Nendo says, oh, you call your mom mama, and he's like, oh, is that because mama means, like, you know, like, demon, like, mama. <laughs> and he tries to, like, you know, just justify the whole thing. And they, Nendo finds his notebook, you know, those notebook where he, Juni, like, you know, things are written. And he's like, don't touch that. And Psyche was like, yeah, better keep that alone. So now the actual thing that happens here is the mom comes in and she starts talking about like, what college are you going? Trying, we'll, we'll go to this and that. What are your, you know, like future um, plans, this and that. And Nando's like, what is that? I don't even know what that, what you're talking about because this is Nando. While Psyche's like, can I eat the coffee jello? <laughs> the mom is like, takes kaido outside <laughs> oh I, I love the fact that when she said um college i think that was like a little word play thing like killer college that's why i was i was really i was like what is she talking about why is she talking about okay where is it okay here we go shibo dai Shibo Daigaku. Now, I know Shibo means skill, and at the same time, I feel like Shibo is also another meaning of what you want to, like, you know, what are your future aspirations or something like that. Shibo Daigaku. Like, which college are you thinking of going to? This is what it means together. While Shibo on its own, I feel it also means to kill someone. So that's why, you know, like, the, the, the translation here was so, which college would you like to kill to get into? At first I was like, what is she saying? Because I did not pay attention to what she was talking. And then I realized it was like a wordplay thing, you know, where Nando was like, haha, why are you saying like killer college? What is that? You know, because he literally took the meaning while the mom was saying something else. And that was like the whole wordplay section. Anyways, um, so the mom takes Kaido outside and the mom is like, oh, like, you know, you, you should not like, you know, uh, Talk with them you should not make like you know uh, be friends with them they're like you know like they don't have any future aspirations this and that and we know how kaido really like you know loves you know his friends because most of the time he is like you know all alone because of his whole tuny thing that's why these friends that he has he really like loves them that's why he's like you know kaido really doesn't want to like you know express like you know like not what can i say like you know, wants to keep being friends with them and that's why he was like, no, mom, like, you know, you're, you're misunderstanding. And he tries to stand up to the whole thing. But the mom was like, no, you're going to have to do with this and that. I'm going to go and talk to them. And uh, he just runs away crying. And Psyche, probably because of that, Psyche was like, all right, let me help him out. And he did all the question and everything, you know, did everything. Mom was like, wow, this is amazing. In so less time, you were able to do it. <laughs> and when Kaido comes in, mom is like 
like oh come like you know, be, keep being friends with my son you know like <laughs> come here more <laughs> we'll give you coffee jello <laughs> and uh, you know like and kaido was like whoa what's happening and then the mom finds his his notebooks <laughs> and that's where it ends all right the next one is where oh my god reita wants to be better like no wants to like talk with one of the girls and he's like i'm going to use a summoning a spirit summoning and i'm like you know, that person is going to possess me and you know i'm going to use that person's expertise to be friends with the, the girl and the person who he decided to make you know like decided to uh, summon is this this guy this flashy guy you know? and uh, he's like all right i'm going to i'm going to do this and he he like you know gets into that person the thing and uh, he goes there like you know talks to the girl and everything and he was like you're doing pretty good i don't know why but that that was really the way he was talking and everything i don't know how the girl was really as, as psyche said i really like you know what can i say I, I really agree with psyche when psyche said i don't know if the the person who is doing this is really good or if the girl is a pushover but yeah the way he talked that was that was really weird I don't know how the hell the, the girl like you know got embarrassed and got you know like flustered at that but anyways like you know whatever floats our boat I guess <laughs> so everything was going well but <laughs> when when Reita comes back to his own self you know his face just completely changes and the girl goes and slaps him so the, the next plan was bringing a hardened protagonist Rintaro, I think that was his name or whatever. And oh my god, like he's one of those characters. Even like <laughs> the old woman <laughs> likes him. <laughs> there's like there's like two twins. There's probably one of those childhood friends. There's like 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 an like a Sundre I can see on his right. And there's like the Sundre's friend. Everyone likes him, you know. So <laughs> and he's one of those dense protagonists who who doesn't really understand what's happening. He's like Ah, uh, what's happening? Really? Like those dense characters. So, you know what? Let me hear his voice. I think it's Kirito's voice. It's Kirito. Oh my god. <laughs> they used Kirito's voice actor. That's amazing. <laughs> Anyways, so he's like, I'm going to use his, like, you know, uh, natural pheromones or whatever. And he goes there, and as soon as he goes in front of the girl, like, you know, the girl is like, oh, you know, who, what is this? You know, like, his, his hair protagonist still is working pretty good. You know, the girl is extremely, like, you know, just really smitten with him. And everything goes well, but you know what? One of this, like, a hair protagonist like this, there's one extra skill that comes with that person. That skill is tripping on nothing, falling and like you know just doing something really crazy that's that's like an extra skill every harem protagonist has and he also had that <laughs> so reta falls down and just you know <laughs> the girl slaps him and oh my god and that's where it ends like oh my god you know what this is so crazy this whole like joke about harem protagonist this kind of a thing I remember, like, you know, in one of those um, manga anime, uh, uh, manga slash anime, which I've, I don't know if you, I, I talked about this show multiple times before in my other videos as well. To Love Roo Darkness, you know, not Darkness, sorry, Darkness was the sequel. To Love Roo, you know, the whole To Love Roo series where, I don't, I don't think there's a spoiler, you know, like, Yuki Rito is the main character's name. He's kind of like that. You know what? In the end of the manga, the anime did not adapt that part, you know, like I'm talking about the manga, very late in the manga. I actually read the whole manga. I, I really, I don't know why, but I really enjoyed that manga, you know. In the end of the manga, there was a section where they actually give us an explanation as to why Yuki Rito always trips, falls down in those type of weird situations. It was actually his disease. <laughs> they actually went in that direction and gave us an explanation as to why that happens. That was like his disease, you know, which he had. 
<laughs> where he always like you know does weird stuff like this and then they completely like you know made this like an actual thing they made this whole thing of actual plot point in the story which i loved so much you know usually what happens is people make jokes about these kind of things of oh like you know he always trips and everything i feel like the author probably obviously the author like you know realized like everyone's talking about it like this that's why he made that thing an actual plot point <laughs> where he trips falls and does all these weird stuff because it's a disease that he has or something like something like that i think that was like the explanation which was hilarious i loved it so much so I don't know. I just wanted to share this, and uh, <laughs> yeah, all harem protagonists have this skill. So it sucks for Reita, you know. He almost got the girl, but unfortunately. <laughs> so, anyways, that's it, and that was my reaction to uh, Taki Sono Sainan episode number nine and ten. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll be uh, I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of Psychic Persona no Sign On. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.